Well, good morning. How are you all today? Welcome to Integrative Preparedness. Can you protect your, uh, yourself and your family against uh, the very possibly coming violence? That's what I want to talk about today. I don't think that most people are ready to, and I think it's because of the way that they look at things. I've been teaching self-defense and combatives and martial arts and, and defensive tactics and all sorts of things like that for close to 50 years, and I, I see some commonalities among people that uh, that are dangerous. And so I want to talk about that. If you've seen the, uh, <clears throat> and I want to tell you how to how, how to deal with it. Um, the the recent figures just came out from the Justice Department. What is it they call it? Their victimization profile or survey or something like that. And the rise in crime and violent crime uh, from 2020 to 2023, uh, which is during the Biden Harris administration, is uh, is let me let me remember. It's uh, total total crime is up 37 uh, percent. Rapes are up. 42 percent um trying to remember these uh, robberies are up 63 percent and crimes against strangers are up 61 percent and, and that's an important one that last crimes against strangers that that shows the rampage of of uh of violent crime out there so it is it is exploding, and it can be exploding close to you, and that's what I want to talk. Oh, by the way, by the way, I should I should have started with this, uh, an important announcement. <laughs> we are just about caught up on uh, delivery on the shipments of all of these mugs. If you know that it, this is, I think this is one is our biggest seller to date. Shop placement is everything. On the side, you see you have the forty three fifty seven. 45 ACP and 10 millimeter, what I consider to be the effective rounds. And I stopped talking about these a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you might notice because uh, we were so overloaded with orders, we weren't keep, we weren't able to keep up. And so I stopped talking about it. I stopped. Uh, I think I may have even told people that you can't order again right now. But we finally caught up. Well, we're not caught up. I think we're going to be caught up. We'll probably get out the last shipments tomorrow or the next day. We had big shipments going out yesterday. We got big shipments going out today, and uh, and then probably by by Monday, probably we'll be all caught up. So anyway, the point is, you can order these again, and these are available. You can go to our website, stonemont.us. These are cool, cool mugs. See, they're on. It's on both sides, so that when you're sitting there talking to friends, they can see it too. You can see it, they can see it, and they'll say, what are those right there? And then you can start explaining to them and, and educating them on on firearms. How interesting would that be, right? Well, you can get these. Uh, go to our website, stonemont.us, and, uh, and you can get them either individually or we have a special. This is the first one and that we offered in a set, a set of four. And those, those actually was, was what set us behind so much. We got so many orders for the sets of four. A uh, set of four is only 80 bucks, and uh, it's uh, shipping's included, everything. I mean, that's that's the full deal. And we had so many orders of four, uh, I never would have anticipated that, that that's what set us back. But we have, we are catching up, and we are ready to go. So you, if you've missed out, if you want more, get more. Or get you one if you haven't gotten one yet. You'll love it. Oh, and although also, we are caught up on delivery well i think i have one going out today we are caught up on uh deliveries of my books the stonemont series there's one missing here because i shipped it out i don't even have it that we were sold out of uh, the, the book number seven on wings like eagles uh but the stonemont series these are my books for those of you who are not familiar with me i've been at this a long time and i wrote a bunch of books about it it's a, it's a series of novels i say it's the complete plan for preparing for, surviving, and rebuilding after a complete collapse of everything. Uh, you can get them on, on Amazon, uh, and they get them to you real quick. Uh, you can get them in paperback or in uh, on Kindle or uh, Audible. Uh, or you can get them from me, and that's the way I really like you to get them, because I don't, I'm not able to get them to you quite as fast as Amazon. Matter of fact, if I get 
snowed under. It, it takes me, you know, I got to wait for delivery to me and then sign. But I get to sign them for you and write a little note in there. And I love my relationship with my readers, just like I do with you all, my viewers. And so if you want, you will learn more in these than you will ever think to ask questions about. I tell people I could make videos for 100 years and I'd never been able to touch on everything I've already already uh, covered in detail in these and you'll love the story you will love the story so those are available again i can i can we can start taking orders for those again on the stone knot website stone .us. the link is down below now let's get back to can you protect yourself and your family against uh the violence that may be coming you know there there's uh, I, I think the people have an inflated opinion over their ability to uh, to really handle violence, and the reason for that is that it's not real to most people. Okay, most people have not lived a life of violence, and by that I mean I don't mean like the occasional, you know. M most people are, are never uh, victimized in a violent way in their life. Okay, and those who are, it's just maybe once. Okay, but our country's falling apart, and and with uh, the influx and the importation of all these. Uh, illegals i need to learn how to say that i could ask a link but i'll look it up how do i say illegals in spanish um with with the influx of all these and haitian uh all these people uh this this country is becoming uh, a country like it's never been at least for 150 years and it's dangerous and you need to be able to 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 be ready for it and deal with it and like i say most people aren't the problem is is that many of those people think they are okay and it's because they they have have maybe tr done some training maybe done some practice keep themselves up on on the news and what's going on and talk to their friends about oh my gosh can you believe what's happening and it's really getting dangerous out there and yeah 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 and uh, so they, they they might uh, you know buy a defensive tool and get out there and do a little training with it and then they think they're ready and uh au contraire mon frere no uh in, until you have your mindset until you have your mind wrapped around and i mean thoroughly wrapped around the idea that it can happen to you and it can happen to your loved ones and it can happen at any time any place you are not ready uh <clears throat> an, an example that i'll tell you i remember that uh because real life, guys, real life is so much different than training. If you haven't experienced it, you can't understand it. Okay. And I'm going to give you clues, some clues here on on how to do that in a, in a minute. Um, a, a, a story that I can tell you that, that kind of encapsulates this is uh, I, I took a team of fighters, some of my fighters, up to Chicago one time. I don't remember what tournament it was but it was in chicago and uh so we we had gone through the the fights that day it was a pancreation tournament i think it might have been the world championships but i'm not sure it was one of them anyway because we went to several tournaments up there uh after after and my guys did very well uh, after uh, the the day the day's fights were over we all decided to walk down uh several blocks and this was in cicero uh to a mexican restaurant and so we were walking down, and uh, most of these kids, now now most of these young guys, these weren't street guys. This was a team from the University of Missouri. And so they were, I mean, they were tough. They were good fighters. They were great fighters. They did it very, very well on the mats and in the rings and all that. Um, but they weren't street guys, okay? And and so we see, we're seeing the difference there between training and real life, or right? the, the difference between a sport and actual combat, a fight. Uh and as we were walking down the sidewalk, uh, one of the one of the kids, one of the fighters, made the statement. I overheard him say it to another another guy there. He says, "Man, I'd feel sorry if anybody jumped us here. Uh, they wouldn't know they wouldn't know what they were getting into with us." And uh, and I stopped right there. And I turned around and I said, "Look, if street guys came up." and started something with you they would tear you up and and i and the kids were a little taken back but i wanted it was a lesson for all of my 
all of my kids. Uh, I said, they would tear you up. You guys are great. You've learned rules. You've learned a bunch of techniques. You've learned, you know, how to fight according within the rules, according to a, a particular protocol. And, and you do very well. Uh, you don't realize that, that, that what you what you're doing is a sport. Now, while, now a lot of it can be used in real life, uh, it can't be used until you get the mindset to use it, because you're 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 not going to use it in the right way. And and so I explained. You know, I said, you know, street guys are going to tear you up. They they may know, know nothing about any of the techniques that that you do, but man, they have used them <laughs> repeatedly. They have experience because they grew up. They're bouncing around. They've been in it. They got the experience. They, they, they learn from their losses. They learn from their lumps. Okay. And as they got older, they got smarter and they got tougher and they got better. And they will just totally tear you up. And I will tell you it's the same thing with, with people who far too many think that they're all ready to go uh, when it comes to... Uh, you know, dealing with things, and I hear it. I hear it in the comments, you know, all the time, and I, I see. I certainly see it. I'm not. It's not as much on this channel as uh, as I see sometimes on other channels. Uh, but but people who have had some training, got a gun, and go to the range all the time, and and you know, they they can put those pellets down there and put it in the and the X ring, you know, all day long, and they think that they're ready, and 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 they're not, you know, because. It, it's kind of back, back to. It kind of goes back to shot placement, you know, because somebody thinks they can put it in the ten ring all day long. Uh, they think, well, that that's it. Well, as I try to explain, uh, there's something unique about having somebody shooting at you. <laughs> I'll just put it that way, you know. I, and I don't mean from 200 yards. I mean from 20 feet. You would be surprised how that refocuses your attention. All of a sudden, you're not focused on on shot placement. You're not focused on your sight. You're not focused on uh, trigger pull and trigger reset. All of those things that people spend so much time on and, and, and get wrapped up in so much. I see it on so many of the gun channels. I, I mean, I, I don't like to watch the gun channels. I, I don't. But occasionally, I'll get in there. I see the same stuff all the time. Oh, this this trigger. You got, you got to see the reset. You see the reset? Oh my lord! Get in a gunfight and see how whether you even feel the reset. You're just going to be banging, you know. You're going to let some go, and you're going to be hoping that you hit them enough. You put, you make enough deposits in center mass to stop the threat. That's what it's about. And until a person realizes that, they're not really ready. So how do you get ready? Um, well, the first thing is to really understand that it can happen. Anything can happen. The most brutal, violent situation can happen to anyone, anywhere, at any time. I'm in the process right now of, of writing a scene in my new book. It's not the it's not the uh, uh, the Stone Mob book. It's it's the Mob, the organized crime book, uh, to where I describe an extremely brutal situation. It's a situation that most people can't even imagine because they haven't been there. Okay. Most people, uh, you know, they, they see the news or they see it and, and they, it, it, it's a superficial introduction. Let, let me say, there's a difference between, uh, you know, being introduced to somebody and knowing the person. It's the same thing. It, it's these things, by seeing it on the news and talking about it, you have a, simp a very simplistic introduction to the concept that there is, you know, violent crime, but you don't have the understanding of it. And that's the important thing. First off, get an understanding that these four, and, and what I would suggest is you do a deep dive. Read a lot about horrible, horrible things that have happened. Read uh, read the stories, the news items, the investigations about uh, abductions, about um, home invasions. I, I mentioned the, the case of uh, Christian Newsom abduction down in Knoxville, Tennessee some time back. Read that. I mean, you you want to see what a person goes through uh, when they are abducted or in a home invasion or when, when violence is really visited on you? Uh, read that stuff, and you will understand the, the importance of being ready. Um, excuse me, just a moment. 
So read about these things so you understand really what, what can, can happen. And then you'll realize, and then realize that in most situations you have a moment, a split second to make a decision as to what to do and then to do it. Okay? It's not enough to, to decide what to do. Unless you do it, your decision is wasted. You have to do it. You have to decide and do it. Because there's that sweet spot. You let it go too far beyond that sweet spot. And by too far, I mean in many cases a second or two. And you have lost your advantage. You have lost your ability to, to deal as adequately with the or effectively with the situation as you otherwise could have. Uh, I, I've said, and, and I'll, I'll say this again, that most people when they're, they're uh, presented with an attack situation, uh, they're not used to it, so they go. They have three enemies: confusion, fear, and the attacker. And uh, while they're dealing with their confusion and fear, their attacker is just doing all sorts of business on them. And you need to get through that. You need to be able to deal with that confusion and fear through training and experience. The training doesn't do it. The experience does, and most people are never going to live a violent life uh, to the extent that they're going to have enough experience to make it natural to them. Okay. But here's where, and I would suggest, because somebody, and I, I didn't mention this the other day when I was talking about this, but I, I often do, and that is, uh, uh, and somebody asked me about it, uh, visualization. Does thinking about it, uh, Matt, yes, it does. The more you understand true violence and the brutality that can be visited on people, excuse me, my, my nose is itching. One of you must be talking about it. Uh, <clears throat> Probably somebody out there. Hey, honey, that guy in the hat's talking about stuff again. Um, you you can. It, it, you know, my my dad when I was when I was young, uh, I was a pitcher in baseball, and, uh, and he he started. He said, "I want you when you go to bed at night. I want you to think about pitching, pitching. Think about every aspect of your wind up, your delivery, and see that ball go right where you want it to go, inside corner, outside corner, high." or whatever like that and I thought well that's a little odd but I did it and it helped it was only years later that I heard about this concept of visualization that's what he was teaching uh, and you know the the science tells us that the the mind has a difficulty distinguishing between a real event and a a a realistic repeated event that you think about and internalize I think that's very interesting um, now, now, nothing, nothing approaches experience. Okay, nothing, nothing. But, yeah, visualization, visualization does help. Think about the situation. What would you do? You know, think about it when you're driving down the street. What would you do if that car behind you rams you? Okay. What would you do if at a stoplight uh, three guys run up and try to get into your car? Uh, a difference between whether they have guns in their hands and not have guns in their hands. Give yourself all these different kinds of scenarios. Excuse me. You're walking out of the grocery store to your car. What happens if somebody walks through those other cars and comes up on you and, and, try, and starts to grab you, whether you're a guy, a woman, or whatever? What if they have a gun in their hand? What if they don't have a gun in their hand? All of these things you should think about. Okay. Uh, and be ready. And, and this is where I always say when it, when, it, when it comes to you, it's not time to get ready. It's time to be ready. You have to be ready. Okay. And that's very often... Um, anticipating the situation I, I, I said also yesterday that when things happen when violent attacks happen uh, they rarely happen without warning okay uh, people who think they happen without warning just missed the warning they didn't see it they had their head in the clouds they were looking at their phone they were you know whatever they were doing they were thinking about something else and they they weren't watching the world around them they weren't anticipating the world around them I'll tell you something some people will say you're paranoid no, I'm aware. Uh, to this day, if I'm passing uh, somebody, uh, say I'm walking to my car. I, I live in a very nice area. Uh, if I'm walking to my car and uh, from the grocery store and somebody's walking the other way, a guy, usually I'm, I'm not afraid of women, but and I'm not afraid of men, but, but I, I'm, I'm not that cautious about women because very rarely does a woman attack a man out in the park. But to this day, and it's simply a carryover from my previous life, uh, as I walk past a guy, you know, and I'll make eye contact and I'll give a nod and all that. But uh, I'm, I'm always waiting and I'm listening to his footsteps as he passes me. 
Uh, I'm watching his 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 actions as he walks towards me and passes me, and uh, and I'm actually I I well let me put it this way I expect him to turn and swing on the back of my head. Does that sound crazy? It's not. It's not paranoid. It's not anything. It's just this has been instilled in my mind because of of a, my previous life, and so I always say this: whenever you're not attacked, be surprised. That way you're not going to be surprised when you are attacked, if you are attacked. Yeah. And you might think, well, that's a horrible way to live. No, it's not. I, I, I have a, no, it's, it's just normal. You know, a, 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 a leopard, a, a leopard, you know, going through the, the jungles of the Amazon. He's careful about everything, every step he takes. He's not oblivious to the dangers of the jungle around him right now. He's an apex predator, but there's still some things out there that, you know, can get him. Or, or try him anyway, uh, and and he goes through and he's very careful, right? And he's very quiet and he's watching everything. That doesn't mean he's afraid. It means he's aware and he's careful. That's why he survives, and that's the way you ought to be. Not going through life with your head in the clouds, oblivious to the th the world around you, uh, and thinking that everything's just going to be peachy because you live, you know, in America or in a nice area or whatever. Well, America is changing. And nice areas are being, uh, or a small town, nice areas and small town are being infested, you know, not to the extent that the, the cities are, but um, they, they are. It is becoming more dangerous. Just refer, refer back to those, those uh, figures from the Justice Department and increase during the last, well, during the Biden administration. And it's probably even greater now because they haven't uh, put in the 2024 figures, but from 20 to 23 uh, and that doesn't mean that much happened during 20 we're just comparing that you know as I would say 21 to 23 37 percent increase in violent crime overall 42 percent increase in rapes 63 percent increase in robberies and 61 percent in increase in crimes against strangers do you want to be a victim or do you want to be ready? That's the decision that you have to make. And then the next decision you have to make is, are you ready to get ready in order to be ready? And that means understanding the very real possibility of dangers, the very, the uh, almost inhuman aspects of, of physical attacks, and uh, to, to prepare yourself to be able to deal with them. And that means physically. That means physically that means either with your hands your feet your elbows your your knees uh, or with a weapon and do you have a weapon with you and is it available and do you know how to use it you are responsible for your safety nobody else is the cops don't protect anybody i've said this for years the cops i mean we'd love to but i can tell you i can count on one hand how many times i rolled up on the middle of a, of, of a violent crime, uh, and I worked a very high crime area uh, without without being called to it. How, how many times I rolled up and was able to do something about it while it was going on? That's not what happens. Usually what happens is the cops, they get a call about something happening. The, the, the guy gets there. The district car gets there. He takes a report. He calls the ambulance, you know, or whoever, or the detectives, and depending on what you know, the seriousness of the crime, and then they try to find out who did it. And that doesn't, that doesn't help the victim at all. Okay? You are the only one that's going to help you if, if an attack comes against you. You're responsible for your safety. You are responsible for the safety of all of those who depend on you and for whom you are responsible. Understand that. Take that seriously. If you're not in the best shape that you should be, get in shape. Okay? Uh, and that's a responsibility. If you are not able to handle a weapon, learn to. If you don't carry, carry. Okay? Because this world is just, this world is going nuts. And if you don't want to be, you know, if you don't want to be caught up in, in, in the crazy. And, and I'm, that, that's not, makes it sound kind of light because, you know, I used to tell people when I'd give uh, self-defense for women classes, 
One of the first things that most people do when they give self-defense for women classes is they come out with these rape statistics. And people always want to know what percentage of, of uh, women are raped in their lives and what percentage of women are sexually assaulted during college because I gave a lot of college. And the first thing that I would say is I don't care. I don't know and I don't care. And then people go, oh, how can you not care? Here's, what, here's why. Because it happens, whatever, you know, 30%, this, 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 it happens to 100% of the ones it happens to. And the brutality of it is unimaginable to anybody who hasn't had it happen to them. And the person carries that through the rest of their life. And it affects the rest of their life. It affects their families, their relationships. Whether they have kids, how they raise their it, it it affects everything, and there is no going back. In almost every situation, every violent encounter, there is one moment that you have, the one optimal moment for you to make the right decision. And you have to be ready to make it, and then you have to be able to, shall we say, dispense the remedy. Simple as that. Okay. All right, guys. Hey, again... Uh, think about that. Don't just think about it. Do something about it. Uh, you can get the mugs again. Get them out there. Stonemont.us. This is it's, it's beautiful, man. I mean, this. I think this is, well, I don't know. We have some great mugs, and you can see all of them on the website. But I think this is one of my one of my favorites. It's certainly the favorite of many people out there. Like I said, you can buy them individually or in sets of four. And then also remember, you can again order these. You've always been able to order them off Amazon. But you can again order these through me, the Stonemont Series, the complete guide for preparing for, surviving, and rebuilding after a total collapse of everything. You will love the story, and you will learn more than you can imagine. Okay? You all have a good day. Remember, we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. So get out there and prepare. And I'll talk to you later.